and this is my portable radio bag. I got it um, yesterday and taking it out on its first portable trip, the Osprey Stratos 50. A 50 litre backpack. Okay, so in the backpack, have a look inside. Um, this is with all my radio equipment. Uh, usually I'd pack a little bit lighter. So this is my Nano VNA uh, SWR meter, which packs very nicely into here. And uh, pigtail to connect to the Super Antenna MP1. So I keep that in this little pouch. Next in a waterproof dry bag, a little bit too big, I've got a smaller one though. It's an 8 amp hour Zippy compact uh, Live Pro 4 battery. Very, very lightweight. The power cable for the radio. And a small power meter which also shows the voltage and current draw. Uh, I'll talk about this later, but this is my portable 2 meter beam, HB9CV, very compact. Next in this bag is the Super Antenna MP1, um, again a very small bag and it contains everything I need to get on from 40 to 10 meters. Finally in this dry bag is the heart of the operation. ASU 857D, which I use for HF and 2 meters portable. And that's about it. <laughs> In the brain of the backpack, I just have a sunglasses case, a portable power bank for my phone, and a Swiss Army knife in case I need to repair anything. Or actually, the most useful thing is a screwdriver. Uh, the Stratos 50 is a really, really comfortable bag. Loads of space for multiple days uh, equipment. And um, yeah, I'm very happy with it so far. So in this bag is the Super Antenna MP1. Uh, at the moment I've got the coil for 40 to 10 meters. So I'll show you what's in the bag. I have 15 meters of RG58 coax cable, about 45 feet and I've uh, wrapped it in yellow tape so uh, people in the public um, don't trip on it, basically. More, more of a safety thing than anything else. In this pocket is the coil, um, the actual Super Antenna MP1 uh, coil. So you adjust the coil um, to change, uh, basically to match the antenna on the bands you want. So I'll show you how to set that up in a minute. In this pocket, I usually have the Nano VNA, um, but at the moment uh, it's in the backpack because I was charging it and just threw it in last minute. Over here is the mount for the antenna. It's got SO239 and a, uh, I think it's called a 38 mount. And over here is where you attach the, the radials. And this is where the tripod fits into. It's got a 38 and also a normal quarter, so you can use any sort of tripod for that. This is the super, this is, well, this is the guide to the super antenna. So for example, um, if I wanted to use the antenna on 20 meters, you measure from the base to the top. And uh, so I need to raise it a little bit more to 14 megahertz. So that's, well, that's 13 megahertz. So you drop it a little bit. Again, I'll show how to set it up later, but that's basically how you use the guide. This is the small telescopic whip that goes at the top of the antenna. These two are called extension rods. They go at the bottom of the antenna. And in here is a ground spike. So this connects to the mount like this. And then this goes in the ground. So I don't really need to bring a tripod with me. 
it's, uh, it's quite an effective portable solution. Okay. And in this pocket, I have two sets of radials, one each for 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. So effectively two radials for each band and a C-clamp. So if I find a bench or a table, I don't need the ground spike, I can just clamp the mounts to the bench or a table. So now I'm gonna set up the Super Antenna MP1. Uh, it'll probably take around five minutes or even less. It's very, very straightforward to do. I'm gonna put the coax and the radial to the side for a second. And this is all you need for the antenna. You connect the two extension rods together by twisting them. You attach this to the base of the super antenna. This is nice and secure. Attach the telescopic whip to the top of the antenna. The ground spike. Thread that through, and where am I going? I'll set it up right in front of me. You want to push that in nice and firmly into the ground, okay, like so. Next, attach the antenna to the mount by threading it, it's nice and secure. Next, extend fully the telescopic whip and the final adjustment uh, to the slider we made after I put the radials on and measure the SWR. The next thing to do is unwrap the coax. I use these uh, Velcro wraps, they're very, very handy to keep everything together. I normally, I take 15 meters with me because it's better to have more coax than less. Um, but to be honest, I could do with 10 or even five meters because I'm operating fairly close um, with a ground spike. So connect the coax. For this demonstration, I'll just use one set of counterpoise wires because it's quicker. So I have them here on a kite winder. So what we want to do is unwrap the wire, connect the spade connector to one of the spade connectors on the mount. and then simply unwind the radials. <laughs> unwind the radials. This is honestly the, the trickiest part. Um, and this is also why I hate wire antennas because it's just too, they're too fiddly for me. Right, so that's unraveled. Ideally what you wanna have is the, well I've read that people say, um, put the counterpoises in the directions of, of the um, places that you want to work. I usually just spread them out in a fan shape. So I'll spread them out in a fan shape and then uh, come back to you. So using the frequency um, adjust guide, I've set the super antenna coil to this height. Right, so after adjusting the super antenna to the correct height, the SWR on the 20 meter band uh, is around 1.2 to 1, uh, which is very, very acceptable. This is my uh, two element HB9 CV portable antenna for two meters. Um, it weighs around 800 grams um, and packs up to about 30 centimeters tall in this bag. So I'll lay everything out on the grass and you can see how easy and quick it is to set up this antenna. So I've got everything laid out on the grass. Uh, this is the bag it comes in, uh, very nice and portable and rolls up. 
and I don't need it. Over here is the mast. I've got two and a half meters of Mini 8 coax. Um, I chose this instead of RG58 because it's slightly lower loss. And um, you know, when you're at 144 megahertz, every, every little bit counts, I suppose. So that's wrapped up with Velcro ties at the moment. These are the uh, elements for the antenna. I've marked with black tape uh, as to which side they go in. So it's just a little bit easier for me to do. Um, so this is the driven element and this is the reflector. And you can tell it's a reflector because it's got this little bl bit of black tape on and uh, it's slightly longer. This goes in the middle between the two. The black tape side goes to the black tape side. The front goes to the front. And this is the mast. So it's a threaded, four threaded uh, aluminium um, poles which go on top of each other and at the very top is the mast. I also have this 90 degree adapter so I can change the polarization. So when I want to do um, FM work, I put this adapter on the top and then it will change from horizontal to vertical polarization. So if, for example, when I bring my handheld only and want to do a SOTA activation, this is uh, very important. So it'll take about two minutes to put all this together. Um, let me show you how to do it. It's very simple. All you do is screw the antenna elements into place. They basically SO239 and PL259 connectors. Uh, the thing to watch out for is to have the gamma matches uh, opposite um, because that's how the antenna works. Okay. And you put the elements in. simply by pushing them in. And uh, be careful because these are a little bit fragile and I had one break um, the second day I actually bought this antenna. So uh, Wemo were nice enough to send me a new one uh, free of charge and with free shipping as well. Um, but just be, be wary of of these gamma matches, they might be slightly fragile. Next thing to do is to screw the mast together. Very straightforward. This antenna isn't going to win you any contests, but it has been very useful for SOTA POTA activations and just a bit of fun. I've been really surprised at how far I can get. I think uh, most recent contact, I got two into France, which about 300 kilometers each. Um, that was on Monday. So it is it is quite a good antenna. And you know, if you have the elevation, uh, it'll do really well for you. A lot better than a, than a whip antenna anyway. It's got about 4.2 uh, dB, DBD gain, I believe it is over a dipole rather than DBI. Right, that's the coax. Um, I'm just gonna stand up and uh, put it all together. First thing you wanna do is get the ground spike, thread in the mast, well, not the ground spike, you wanna get this, this end of it and thread it into the mast. Then you want, with the ground spike end, push it into the ground very securely. Okay, it won't go any further. Next, you want to figure out which direction you want to point the beam in. I'll just point it north. So if you come over. Connector screws on. So um, it might wobble a little bit depending on how wet the ground is, or you know stuff like that. Um, how deep you can get the ground spike in, how hard the ground is. Uh, but this is this is fine. It's probably not the best spot, but for demonstration purposes, it will do. So here we have the horizontal beam. 
Um, so I'll be, I'm beaming this way at the moment because this is where the um, this is where the beam is pointing. Uh, so that's about it. It's um, just below head height. Um, have a short amount of coax cable, which I'll either attach to my handheld or my Yesu 857 if I want to do uh, sideband. I've got a little neck strap for that. So I wrap the Yesu around my neck. This goes into the back of the rig. 20 watts out, no problem. This can handle up to 50 watts. It's a great antenna. Um, really happy with it. Super lightweight. Um, loads of gain. A good front to back ratio. Um, yeah, great antenna. I'll, uh, you know, I have another video of me using it uh, at some point, but uh, at the moment, this is a very low area, only about 50 meters above sea level. So I'm not gonna bother trying it at the moment. So these are my two portable antennas, very small, about this, you know, my height, the HF uh, and two meters. Uh, and the super antenna can actually do two meters as well. I've got the, um, the coil for that and the, and the, um, the diplexer. Um, but you know, if I've got a beam, I'd rather use the beam for that. And the great thing with the 857, of course, is that I can attach both antennas to it, HF and two meters at the same time. Uh, normally it's type N, but I've got a type N to SO239. So I can put both antennas in and you know, it's, it's a really, really good go kit. I'm very happy with it. Again, powered by this extremely light, I mean, you know, smaller than a water bottle, about the same weight as a water bottle, about 900 grams for, you know, eight, eight and a bit amp hours of battery. Um, that'll give me plenty of hours uh, of transmit time, uh, depending on how often I transmit. But you know, looking around three hours at least. Uh, so enough for, for a day's portable activity. And uh, if it's gonna be longer, I'll just take two of them. <laughs> it's no problem. So uh, anyway, I hope you found this vaguely interesting. Um, this is how I do radio. Thank you. Okay, so this is my portable station. Two meters on that side, HF over here, my Osprey Stratus 50 backpack, my little cool sign bag over here, battery over here, and uh, this is some HF from the US coming in at the moment.